I've been working on uh, Frank Lloyd Wright uh, since my uh, MIT doctoral years on his built and unbuilt community designs. And the, the object that um, we're using for the focal point of my work here is uh, the first site plan that he did for Galesburg, sometimes called Galesburg Country Homes, sometimes called the Acres. It's a housing development about 10 miles south of Kalamazoo. A group of property owners figured that they would be able to afford much more land if they went outside of town. They bought a, a large tract. They approached a right about designing the subdivision for them, and he agreed to do it. Um, if he could design some of the houses, he wouldn't charge him for the subdivision plan. Using the 100-foot survey lines that they had, he located at first the centers of all the lots on these topo vertices. And then he would slide lots along the lines in both directions. So in fact, every one of the lots is centered along one of those lines and would be very easy to lay out in practice. When you look very closely, you see these secondary little circles. And it turns out there's 17 or so of those. And each one depicts a choice open to one of the communal members. So each member would choose one of those lots and the other one then would go unbuilt on and would be communal space. And so it turns out that there are almost a million and a half possible configurations of this. But yet he's in complete control at the same time. It's brilliant. The most interesting aspect of um, the work that I'm doing that you, you can literally see here and that we'll talk about with some of the other drawings is the incorporation of movement, is the presence of movement and the changing perspective. Uh, in his conception of a place or an object, and the relationship of that changing perception to the landscape, how it helps you understand um, the landscape that you're in and the role of that object within it. Okay, so the question of movement, and how do you see movement in a drawing? Well, I, I would think um, maybe in two ways. One uh, is this, the sinuous, curving, continual, non-stopping nature of these roads. As you look at the drawing, your eye moves, right? As though you were looking at a vine crawling up the side of a building. You cannot look at this drawing without your eye following that. And so it's simulating. It's not only representing, it's simulating movement there. That's one. The other, as we start to look at some of the other drawings, we'll see how he actually is moving the drawings and moving pieces of the drawings and moving um, layers in relation to one another. This is the first initial study plan for the great house known as Wingspread that Wright designed and built uh, in 1937 uh, for Herbert Johnson, who was the owner of the Johnson Wax Company. On this drawing, uh, there's a, a wonderful little diagram drawn here of a kind of an octagonal central core with four wings spinning off um, eccentrically. And when he began this drawing, it appears that he has this octagonal-like core and that the first wing follows the orientation that's in this little diagram. But then it's cut out and moved and pasted back in. And then that position, that relationship of this wing to the core is duplicated. The initial orientation that was lost in that is maintained in ghost lines and garden walls and the orientation of a fireplace. And in fact, it physically was moved. And then over the life of this drawing, you'll notice how it's cut in the corners. The sheet itself was rotated on the drawing board. So it's a very dynamic kind of process that's going on, and this cut and paste method is a way of dealing with or, or reenacting movement, and it's a fascinating process for so many reasons. One is that um, if you've ever designed a building, you, you lay out the, the plan, you know, typically you, you tape your sheet down, it has one orientation, and you get comfortable and familiar with that. And if you come back to it later and, and it's upside down or it's at an angle, it seems foreign and every architect will turn it back to the original orientation because that's what they understand. That's the imprint it's made on their mind. Well, in this project, Wright 
intentionally seems to be subventing that and changing that so that he's constantly thinking of it in a much more complex way that becomes a modus operandi for some of the later designs. 